Hit him! Watch out! Give it your all! Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mark Annan. Bid you all welcome back to Gothic 2. If you're wondering why I'm out here giving Bebo a little uh, pep talk while he's going through his drills here, that's because Sergio is supposed to be out here with him. But for some reason, he's bugged today and will not do it, even after I reloaded the game. Uh, once you get him... <coughs> excuse me. Once you get him to agree to uh, do some drills with Bebo, they're supposed to meet out here at 5 a.m. Uh, every morning, like he said. And for some reason, he hasn't been doing it. I think I bugged it somehow by sitting on it for too long and not telling Bebo straight away. But... Uh, before we begin today, I wanted to go over a couple things that I, I, in fact, did not leave on the screen, because I'm an idiot. One second, please. There are a few things, some very important things, in my opinion, that I forgot to do before we actually joined the monastery, and, uh, cannot really be dealt with now that we've done that. The first thing was, uh, something I meant to check on before we joined, and I actually figured it out last episode when I, um, not last episode, the one before that, I screwed up. Uh, getting Balthazar, allowing him to, uh, have his sheep graze on Bengar's farm. Um, once, it, like I said, once you deal with the militiamen, you can take care of that. But unfortunately, because the quest is only supposed to be available to mercenaries, um, it disappears once you join any other guild. So we can actually go through and, um, get rid of the militiamen since they're still there. And get Bengar to agree to let Balthazar back. But we don't get the option to turn into Balthazar anymore because the quest has completely disappeared from the log. It's not even in the failed missions. Excuse me. Something's up with my throat today. Uh, the other thing, the arguably more important thing that I forgot to do, um, was pray at the shrines. So there is a reward you can get every 100 gold per day that you donate to a Shrine of Enos. And what you get depends on what, what guild you join. For some reason, Militia and Guildless get the most rewards. If you join the Mercenaries, you get... You can get up to 10 Strength and 10 Dexterity for a total of 2,000 gold. And if you join the Monastery, you can get up to 20 mana for a total of 2,000 gold. But if you join the Militia or do it before you join a guild, you can get both rewards in the end. I meant to do that because I wanted the 10 Strength and Dexterity since I'm never going to invest any learning points into those as a mage. But I screwed that up, and now that we've joined the Monastery, we can't do that. However, um, to that point... In my tests, it seemed that you get the strength and dexterity before you start getting the mana. So it is possible to uh, get the 10 strength, 10 dexterity, and then hold off on getting the mana until later on in the game, when it becomes too expensive in learning points, and save it for then. But, since I didn't do that, what I'm going to have to do which I'll find another way to do it, is somehow drop 2,000 gold, or otherwise waste it, and then just cheat to give myself the additional strength and dexterity. And that way we can essentially just act like I had done it. I hate doing it that way. It feels like cheating even though it's the same result, but... It is what it is. I don't really have a choice at this point. It's either I accept that I lost it, or I go back to this save and go through it all again. And I don't feel like doing that. That's going to take too long. So, I won't worry about that now. We don't need the strength or dexterity right now. We'll take care of that at a future time. So, uh, two other things I forgot to do, which I took care of and uh, recorded real quick. I never turned in the quest to kill the Black Wolf on the road to Isgaroth, so I took care of that. That was 100 XP that we missed out on. And I also forgot to report back to uh, the mage Marduk, who's standing here, who asked us to pray for the Paladins. We get 50 XP for letting him know that we did that. 
In the meantime, we have gotten the... Uh, we've gotten into the library, learned about the test of fire, and now we can demand it. I didn't know that you can actually talk to Highglass about hey. it. So let's do that first. I demand the test of fire. The test of fire is from the olden days and has not been held for a long time. What you're demanding is far too dangerous. So just don't think about it anymore. Oh, you pansy. We, I know what I'm capable of. Hey. Karis does not have anything to say about it. But it's irrelevant what Master Highglass thinks. Because we can make our demands before the High Council. And our demand cannot be denied. I want to undergo the test of fire. So you know about? I know about. You want to pass the test of fire? Yes, I refer to the law of fire, which says... We know the law of the fire. We have also seen many novices die during the test. You ought to reconsider this decision. Yes, I have. I want the test, and I am going to pass it. If you absolutely insist, then the High Council will put you to the test. I insist on being given the test of fire. In that case, so be it. When you're ready, <laughs> each magician from the High Council will give you a mission which you have to fulfill. May Enos have mercy on your soul. I'm not sure why those two stood up as if for, like, dramatic effect. But I think we just hit, like, an hour, um, changeover where they're supposed to do something else, but their, uh, AI is just triggered to sit in these chairs again. So for some reason, they just stood up and sat back down. I am ready to face your test, Master. And only Enos alone knows whether you are going to pass it. You shall be put to the same test which is given to the chosen novices. The test of magic. You probably know that only one of the novices can pass the test. I see. Who are my competitors then? Enos, in his wisdom, has chosen three novices who are also going to be put through this test. Egon. Igaraz and Ulf. They have already started the search. But enough of that. Hear the words of the test. Follow the signs of Enos and bring us what the believer finds behind the path. You are going to need this key. That is all we have to say to you. He says that's all we have to say to you, but that's actually not true because the other two uh, council members have tests for you as well. Like I said, the tests of magic is a single test that the Chosen Ones have to uh, accomplish. But the test of magic involves a single test from each of the three council members. So we also need to get quests from them. So Igaraz, Aegon, and Ulf. Igaraz and Aegon were both uh, two of the cockiest, most narcissistic members of this monastery. Ulf is a strange one. He was not even in the monastery this whole time. He, if you don't remember, was the one standing at the bar in the Gallus Square in town. Because he was sent to make a wine delivery there, and for some reason, never really had to report back. And yet he still managed to become a Chosen Minos despite shirking so many duties. Nevertheless. I'm ready to face your test, Master. I'm not surprised that you know the old law. But I suspect that you do not realize what risk you are taking. Bear in mind that an impatient spirit will not withstand the test of fire. It has been a long time since anyone took this test, and there is only one man who ever survived it and passed. A young, ambitious novice then. He has long since found his place in the High Council. I speak of Serpentus. He won't be the only one who ever passed that test for much longer. Then I shall not keep you waiting any longer. Here are my test for you. Create a fire arrow rune. That is all. May Enos help you. Sounds incredibly simple, but uh, it's not something we really have the means to do. So I guess that is a tall order. And my friend Val pointed out how hilarious it is that none of the other uh, test takers have to create a rune as part of their test. In spite of the fact that being able to create runes is sort of a basic ability of being a mage. But I guess, for some reason, we have to particularly prove our capabilities. Whereas the ones who were chosen 
Uh, just have to complete the test, and then they'll be instructed from there. I'm ready to face your test, Master. So, you want to put yourself to the test? Only a courageous novice demands the test. But courage is not all that you need. Are you clever enough to pass the test? Are you strong enough to meet the dangers that await you? If not, you will pay for it with your life. And now hear your test. In the place of stones, seek the one who was never born. Find him who once was summoned. Overcome the one who cannot be overcome. Measure yourself against the living rock. Fight with the undying stone and destroy it. Living rock? What kind of a creature would that be? I have told you everything. Or do you find this test too difficult? Now you will learn what it means to take the test of fire. I will answer no more of your questions. I heard that you passed the test of fire. In all humility, I can tell you this. Everyone else who has attempted this is dead. You really should not attempt to take this test. Your spirit is weak. Better to serve in the monastery, and perhaps you will be chosen in a few years. I am going to pass the test. If it is the will of Innos, then you shall. But if not, then you will fail. So I'd like to point out that it is strange to me that only one... Um, hey, oh, pardon me, I was talking. Really demanded the test of fire? Yes, no, and I intend to pass it. Good. Maybe I can help you with it. No better off myself. I can give you a very useful spell scroll. A sleep spell. Interested? It's not what I heard. What do you want for it? Every magician who is accepted gets one wish. And if you really pass the test of fire, then you could fix it so that I can stay in the monastery. All right, give me the spell scroll. Good luck in your test. May Innes help you. Yes, may he indeed. Yeah, we don't need his help. So I'd like to point out that it doesn't make much sense that the only one person, only one chosen novice can pass the test. Because it's the same riddle, and if they all figure it out on their own, it's... I don't really see any reason why we would not be able to all prove our worth. But I guess it's just uh, to try and make it a real exclusive achievement. Besides, I guess if one person were to complete the test, the other, the rest of them could simply uh, have followed along and kind of cheated. You know, looked over his shoulder as he took the test, as it were. So, the rule, or excuse me, the riddle, the path of believers. I'm to follow the signs of Enos and bring what the believer be finds behind the path. He gave me a key to. So, the signs of Enos, believe it or not, I figured out the answer of this one, like, almost immediately when I first played this. And I could not believe... Like, I, I thought I was wrong, because of, it seemed like such a simple riddle. I was like, how does it make... How, how is that the difficult test that everyone has to take? The signs of Innos. Well, there's only one, like, oblique... Is that a, is that a word? There's only one, like, real obvious sign of Enos in the world, and that are the roadside shrines. So you can try and follow them. Admittedly, because they don't really follow a strict path, it's not the most obvious um, route to follow, and as such, it's kind of a crappy riddle. But, having uh, followed... Um... Excuse me, having followed Larry's before, we know that there are quite a few on the route that it takes to get to the ruins where the water mages are. Now, if we take any other road, there really aren't a lot for quite some distance. So, that's the only path that seems to have any signs of Innos. And to prove that we're on the right path, we actually encounter some of our rivals along the way. It has happened. Enos has chosen me, and I shall take part in the test of magic. I'm in it too. I demanded the test of fire. You did what? 
So either you are a favorite of Innos, or completely crazy. I've already done a lot of crazy things, so I'm positive I can pull this off too. Enos holds his hand over me. Therefore, I shall pass this test. Well, it sounds like he holds his hands over a couple other people, and you're just kind of standing here. Have you seen Aegon or Ulf? We split up at the inn. I went to the farms, and those two set out together. But where to? I don't know. And? Found out anything yet? Since you stand no chance anyway, I may as well tell you. Don't bother looking near the farms. There is nothing there that will get you anywhere. Now, admittedly, that one did lead me astray. I thought he was trying to uh, pull, a, pull a fast one on me. And, uh, you know, send me off on the wrong trail. But there is, in fact, nothing to find over at the farms. Maybe we could work together. Forget it. I'll accomplish this mission alone. You would just be a hindrance to me. Well, fine. I don't want you trying to solve the test before me anyway. Do you know anything about a living rock? <laughs> no. Did Serpentes give you this test? Yes. Why? I think I can imagine what he means. You wouldn't be the first person to fail this test. Where exactly can I find this living rock? Just keep following this path. After quite a while, you'll come to a river. Just continue to follow the path up the mountain. It's got to be up there someplace. When you come to a bridge, you've gone too far. <laughs> if you get that far in the first place. That's all I'm going to tell you. <laughs> it's supposed to be your test after all. So, that was one of the original things that confused me, uh, when I didn't realize that the other novices don't have to complete the test for Serpentes and Ulthar as well. But now it all makes sense. But what doesn't make sense is he mentions that we're not the first person to fail this test, and I question who else took it. Because it sounds like nobody's really invoked the uh, Law of Fire in quite some time. But anyway, that is also one of the other clues. Here's one of the shrines here, and we know that there's one up ahead. Um, that is also one of the clues that you are on the right path, because it actually turns out that all three of uh, the tests you have to do kind of work together. And those who already know the solution to this test, which is probably like 99% of the people watching this, will... Notice that I did not bring something with me that is required to complete Serpente's test. Uh, because I kind of want to go through the intended problem-solving process uh, that goes along with completing this. And actually, De what Dirian the novice offered us in the form of the sleep spell is something that is supposed to help us with that. But, let's follow... Igor has his clues for now, which he says, follow the path along the river, up the hill. Hello, lurker. So, I bought this staff last time, and while doing a test run, I determined, once and for all, that I absolutely hate two-handed weapons. At least if you're not good at using them. They do not deal any extra damage and mess with my timing and all my techniques. Because trying to fight a lurker... I end up getting my ass kicked because the backstep dodge takes so much longer that I can't stop him from attacking. But I also did determine that the lurkers actually flinch on the... Wow, I'm just getting wrecked. The lurkers actually flinch on the first hit of... Of every... God damn it! Wow, I'm getting fucked. What is wrong with me today? The Lurkers actually flinch on the first hit of every combo. For some reason, don't flinch on the second one. Previously, I thought that they uh, just wouldn't flinch a second time if you uh, hit them while they were already um, recovering from the first one. But it actually turns out that for some reason, they flinch every single time you hit them. Or they always flinch on the first swing. So if you just kind of do the strafe trick, 
to only do the first swing. You can hit them more than once and kind of keep them locked. But they backpedal quicker than you can follow up. And as you can see, that actually is not a technique I've practiced that much. And therefore, it actually works worse for me. Luckily, we're packing meat. So, I can get them hit points back, no problem. I would not recommend trying to follow this river. Actually, we can. I don't really have all the time in the world for this episode, but... If you were... A brave soul, you would be able to sneak around in this cave... Just around the corner here. And collect some fine loots. But, as you can see... There's a hefty shadow beast in there. So we will actually make this trip another time. Nothing in there is that important to us right now. But, as stated... When you learn how to sneak... Um, you can only sneak around animals that are sleeping. Otherwise, they will smell you. So, if you at least keep your distance, you can sneak around the shadow beast in there. There's actually a second shadow beast further in the cave. You can sneak around them and get all the loot in there without having to fight them. But it's nothing that important. Now, you will notice something standing there in this uh, bit of a clearing. That was not there the last time we came through. I believe in Vanilla Gothic 2, that golem would actually spawn... Even if you were not a member of... Even if you did not join the monastery. At least in this version, he only spawns uh, once you have joined the monastery. Because he cannot be killed outside of doing this quest. As I will demonstrate. We have no means to damage this asshole. But, the funny thing about golems is that they are easy to stun lock. But it's kind of irrelevant because we can't... We can't really do any damage to them. So, it is no joke when, uh... Serpentes called him the Undying Stone. So, we need another means to deal with that. If you remember... A, uh, a fable we heard in the first episode after we joined the monastery. Somebody who slew an undying rock with a certain relic. That is what you're supposed to remember. And that is actually why, when you hear the story from Garwig, the uh, novice who guards the relics in the basement of the monastery, that's the reason why he can repeat the story of, uh... Was it Dominic? Or was Dominic the one with the shield? Whoever the hell it was, the one who used a hammer to slay the stone sentinel. Also, I forgot about this crossbow last time we walked through here. But the one who slew the stone sentinel with the hammer of Inos, which, thankfully, they didn't bolt that to the wall. But that is what we will need. Unfortunately, Garwig never takes a nap, so he never really leaves it unguarded. But, we have the means to deal with that now that we accepted a uh, the request from Deary and the Novice. So as I said, everything kind of wraps together. Right over this bridge we encounter the second sign that we are on the right path. Looks like another rival of ours standing here. Hey, do you know what happened? You've been chosen. Right. Just as I was about to have a cool sip of beer, Darren comes around the corner and tells me I've been chosen. Who would have thought? I wouldn't the have. The will of Innos is unfathomable. What brings you here? I've demanded the test of fire. It's not possible. Oh, yes, oh, it is. You are damn brave. Does that mean you will also seek that which the believer finds behind the path? Looks like it. Have you found out anything yet? 
Well, I just followed Aegon, but in the meantime, I lost him. And now, what do they say? Follow the signs of Innos. But I don't understand that bit with the path. So what? I'll keep searching. Oh, yes, you will. You can keep searching by the road right there. Hang on. You encroaching on me. Hey, are you following me? Nonsense. I just happen to be going in the same direction as you. Well, why don't you go first, then? Hmm? I don't trust you. You are following me. Stop running after me. I'm not following you, but please, if that's what you think, then I'll take a different path now. Damn right. Now, you might be tempted to have him tag along just to mop up uh, enemies as you encounter them. But he the difference is he's following you, but he's not a companion, so you do not get the XP for everything he, he kills. So it is not recommended. I don't really need to gather everything here. So we didn't go this far down the path uh, when we were following Lara's, because we didn't need to. Our path with him simply led around the corner there. Do you mind? Yeah, buzz off. So we find another shrine. It seems that we are still on the path of Enos. I guess the only real clue that you are on the right path is that these are the only um, statues of Inos to actually follow a path. The rest of them are kind of off the road. Bagok. So now I think about it, we did come this way because we dealt with the sun aloe. So I'm not really sure why all these things respawned already, unless we just left them behind. But regardless. You might remember this asshole up in the tree. For some reason he still seems to be stuck up there. Oh, there we go. These are some of the most annoying things to fight. But I guess when they get themselves stuck like that, it makes it quite a bit easier. They are incredibly hard to hit because they're one of the only enemies that can... Um... Nothing like, quickly change directions. They're not stuck in kind of, like, you know, a four-axis movement where one movement has to end before they can start another. They're actually one of the most mobile enemies in the game. Although they follow, I think, kind of some of the same pathing as the blood flies. But as you can see, there's really nothing special about them. They don't drop anything. They only give 40 XP. So, like, what the hell? So if you press on that way, you will find that you don't see any more Shrines of Innos along the way. So the last one that really puts you on the path is the one that we passed down there. So from there, there's not really much sign of which way you're meant to go. But it is, in fact, through this cave here. And if you bang a right, you see your final clue that we're in the right place. One more statue of Innos. And in this uh, hollow here, you do a bit of snooping, you can find behind this ivy, a cave. Now, this cave is a bit dangerous because there are enemies up above that we are not really capable of dealing with. There are actually some minecrawler warriors, which you might remember from the free mine in the first game. And they are some tough customers. And actually, if you do this quest a bit differently, you might encounter them by accident. But I'll explain that in a bit. For now, we need to bang a right down here to this lower cave, and I'll be damned if this doesn't look like a holy place. It might have the answers we seek. And in between these columns of light, we see one chest. This chest is opened with the key that Pyrocar gave us, and all it is is a blank runestone. Now, I'm not sure how... I really should test it now that I think about it. I'm not sure what the victory condition for this quest is. 
if it's the act of opening this chest or the act of acquiring the rune or what. Because there's no other opportunity for us to acquire a rune this early in the game. And it makes me wonder, if we get one incidentally, by cheating, if we could, like, break the sequence of the quest. That would be interesting. That'll be worth testing. But, as we can see, we are the first ones to get here. So victory is ours. So let's make our way back. You found the hiding place before me. That cannot be! That must not be. I shall not permit it. They won't even find your corpse. Oh, you think so? The old Aegon here. Mr. Nepotism himself. So this, he's actually one of the, I think the first, well, besides Bronco, the first enemy we've encountered who has a two-handed weapon. And the range of it can make this fight a little bit trickier. But he's not that hard to deal with. And unfortunately, we have no choice but to kill him when we encounter him here because, um, well, we don't even get the option to let him live. You can run away if you want to, and he'll just stay here until the end of time. But he forced our hand, so it is what it is. Now, the interesting thing with Aegon is that he can actually get here first, depending on the order in which you do things. For the longest time, I did not know that because I have never encountered him outside the cave since the first time I did this. Because every time since then, I would take care of Serp Serpente's riddle first since it was on the way to completing this. And from that point on, you actually encounter him inside the cave where he gets there before you. And I was dumbfounded during the stream when somebody revealed how that worked. I don't know why I never put it together myself, but I started to think that maybe I never actually encountered him outside the cave. And that for some reason it was just another one of those things where my dumb dumb brain made it up and convinced myself of that for ages. But then somebody revealed how that actually worked. And he actually, you have some dialogue options with him in that event that he gets there first. But even if you try to be peaceful with him, his uh, paranoia drives him to attack you anyway. So one way or another, you have no choice but to slay him and take credit for yourself. So anyway, we, we got what we need. And conveniently, it is a rune stone, so we can actually use that to complete Ulthar's quest. I say again, everything wraps together. It's almost like they planned this, even though it seemed like each of the, uh, each of the three masters really came up with their condition on their own. So Ulf is still standing on the road here. As you can imagine, things are about to get awkward. If you want to, he is incredibly easy to avoid. Just head around the hill that way. But we're going to take him head on. Meet again. I've been thinking, you know. I believe that the desire to be a magician is strong in me. Oh man, don't do that. I have no choice. A novice's life is not for me. I just have to be a magician. Then everything will go well with me. And now I shall take what I'm entitled to. Do you have any last words? Funny, you never really seem to have much ambition as a novice, considering all you did was stand at a bar and drink all day. But this is the most random dialogue option in the game, but I guess uh, it is very classic to uh, give the condemned their last smoke. Have you got anything to smoke? You're lucky. I've actually got something right here. But there's really no point to this. It does not make the fight any better. Let's get it over with. But we might as well. 
So for some reason, the slow-mo effect that usually comes with getting stoned seems to be a bit bugged. I don't know, maybe it does make it easier. It seems like I'm having an easier time staying behind him. But the weird, warbly, fisheye effect really doesn't do anything to help you. So you notice they all have the key, so if you're like me and you like to collect keys, you end up with a decent collection of those. Now, the last um, of our rivals is Igaraz, as we, well, as we well know. And he is arguably the easiest one to avoid. Because if you want to, you can actually just jump down on the river and swim back to the monastery from here. But I might as well demonstrate what that encounter looks like. But first, let's kill some rats. I don't really feel like leaving these behind. So, Mr. Chosen Pants. Looks like we won the test after all. And he actually has absolutely nothing to say. And if I'm not mistaken, if you dig through the, um... The files, you might actually find... I, I have to remember. Because my friend Val is very... Uh... Very practiced in f uh, digging through the files of these games using the uh, Gothic VDFS or whatever it is. And I can't remember if she said she encountered any lines from Igaraz uh, about this or did not. But one way or another, he doesn't have anything to say. And he just stands there literally for the rest of his life. Even once we become a mage and we strut about him in our fancy pimp like pimp robes he doesn't have anything anything to say and he just stays there it's very bizarre but it just seems like they forgot to give him anything the fact that if you were to beat him up he would actually just go down dead like he doesn't get knocked down he dies so it makes it seem like he was meant to be a third encounter akin to the other two but for whatever reason they didn't uh finish the programming on that but it is what it is. At least, uh, we can spare some of the lives. Although, when we report this in, you'll notice that the hero kind of dismisses all of them as failures. I found the rune stone. You did it? You followed the signs and discovered the hidden portal? And I defeated all those monsters who had already marked me down as a snack. And the other novices then? What about Aegon? Did they not succeed before you? They have failed. I suppose they weren't destined to pass the test. Well, then we declare that you have passed this test, and the runestone shall be yours to keep. Can you imagine how hilarious it would be if we passed that test and then died to Serpentes, and all four, uh, were all three chosen, plus the one who demanded the test of fire, all basically failed, and they had to... They had to hold another event to try and get a new mage. But anyway, we passed one of the three tests. We have the runestone we need to make the fire arrow. But we still need to pick up a weapon in order to defeat um, the uh, uh, stone sentinel. So high glass is supposed to be kind of our instructor of sorts. Hey. I have demanded the test of fire. Ulthar gave me the task to create a fire arrow rune. Now you want me to teach you the formula? I don't know how else I could do it. Hmm. All right. I'll teach you the formula. But first you need to find all the necessary ingredients. What ingredients do I need for a fire arrow rune? Read up on it. It's right there in the books. You mean we need to study? What is this madness? So the first circle, fire arrow requires sulfur, but in addition to the reagent, we need a blank runestone and a spell scroll to uh, imbibe the spell into hey. the runestone. Teach me to create the fire arrow rune. In order to create a fire arrow rune, you'll need to join the sulfur with the runestone at the rune table. The power of the fire arrow spell scroll will flow into the rune and you will possess a tool of Enos. So, once you have all the raw materials, walk over to the rune table and create your rune. Oh boy, our first rune. Now it does unfortunately cost 
learning points to learn the Fire Arrow Rune, and despite the fact that it is a fairly useless spell, but we can at least apply it in some circumstances later on. Um, but the, I believe it costs three learning points, and we have no choice but to spend that in order to uh, complete this task. But, at least now we have a rune, we have proven our worth. And we still need to complete Serpentes. So let us pay another visit to the Room of the Holy Relics. And we shall need one of these. I remember the first time I couldn't figure out what I was supposed to do with a sleep spell, so I cast on Igaraz, <laughs> thinking that he was going to follow me and that would be a way to keep him off my back. But then it turned out it was Ulf who was following me. And he can be told off with a simple stern shouting. So anyway, take a nap, sir. You're working too hard. Whatever you do, make sure you do not talk to him. Well, actually, it's not really that important. But just make sure you don't accidentally give it back. The hammer is an interesting weapon. It has no requirements. Does not say how much damage it does. And, um... I could look it up on World of Gothic, but I don't think that has any stats either. It is specifically scripted to deal damage to the Stone Sentinel. But it does deal damage to other enemies as well. I just have never really determined how much. And the easiest way to tell is to use it against an enemy that has like no physical resistance. So if we just take a, uh, take a, an enemy, use Marvin mode to turn it into something with no resistance and then just give it a whack, we can do the formula in reverse, in, in reverse to find out what, uh, damage we deal. But anyway, if you come down the hill here into the lake, we can swim along here in this river, uh, well, this lake turns into a river that takes us back on the path to the Stone Sentinel, so it's a bit of a shortcut. Okay, let's make sure we equip, equip the band hammer. Go teach this living rock. That rocks ain't supposed to be living. So if you're concerned that this is going to be a, uh, a test of skill, it's really not. This, uh, this hammer really knocks it out of the park against this particular foe, at least. So once you got eyes on it, just... Get yourself ready. Charge forth. Just give it a little whack a towel. Nothing to plunder. That's all it takes. Fortunately, it does not drop anything. But it is deceased, and we uh, have passed the test. Now we've looted this place before, but I did, in fact, notice I missed something. Now, old dragon root here. Uh, there were also, I think there was like a long sword and a couple other things up here. But the dragon root, definitely want to grab that. Although we might not personally use it. Nevertheless. So, let's head back to the monastery. Now we have passed all the tests of Fuego. And should be able to, uh... Finally claim our rightful place. I never knew that. Now before we move on, I just wanted to point something out that I only noticed when I loaded up the game yesterday to do a test run before, ahead of doing this episode. Something that blew my mind. I've never seen it before. Look at those birds. All them birds. I've never seen those birds before, and they disappear if, depending on the angle of the camera. But I have never seen them birds. And they only show up when you first load the game. And they come flying in from some point over the hills there. 
fly over the monastery and just disappear. And until you reload the game, they never show up again. So I've never seen it because I never usually like save and reload inside the church here. And that's the only way you would ever notice them. Blows my mind. The things you see after all these years. So before we turn into Serpentes, we actually want to drop the hammer. Well, you don't necessarily have to, but if you wanted to keep it for any reason, you would want to drop it. Otherwise, he's going to take it from you. I have defeated the golem. What? You have actually done it? But without the hammer of Innos, you would never have been able to destroy the golem. Indeed. Nevertheless, I must admit that you have fulfilled the task I have given you. And if we had not dropped the hammer, his third line would have said, I had better take the hammer for myself. So he obviously knows how he did it. He just can't believe that we actually managed to acquire the hammer in order to do it. I have created the rune. Well done, novice. You shall keep this, your first rune. Once you have reached the first circle of fire, you will be able to use it. You will fulfill this test to my satisfaction. Oh, I am a novice no more, my friend. We shall soon be equals. Will I be accepted into the Magician's Guild now? You did it. You have passed the test of fire. We were certain all along that you would succeed in doing this. Of course Just you were. as certain as we are that you will continue to give your best to become a worthy servant of Enos. So, if you are ready to swear the oath of fire, you shall be accepted into our ranks as a magician. I swear it. I'm ready to step into the circle of fire. Right. Then swear the sacred oath of fire. Do you swear before Lord Enos the Almighty, his servants and the holy flame, that henceforth and forever, your very life shall be united with the fire until your body and soul find rest in its sacred halls and the flame of your life dies away. I swear. By speaking the words of the oath, you have entered the pact with the fire. Wear this robe as a token of the eternal bond. Now that I believe we've made that oath once prince, before. You can talk to Lord Hagen, the high commander of the Paladins. We are also very interested to hear how he assesses the situation. So, you are free now to go to Corinis. We expect you to bring us his answer immediately. Well, if you were that interested, you could have sent someone along the whole damn time, but instead you sat on it until now. I'd like to express a wish. After he has been accepted, each magician has the right to his first act. So, what will your first act as a magician be, hmm? Now, we can throw a bone to a couple of the friendlier fellows here, but... Um, one, this option only occurs, I think, if we accept the, uh, spell scroll from Dirian. If we refuse it and don't, maybe it doesn't, but if we re refuse it and don't, uh, do this, he will show up outside of the monastery and just won't have anything to say. But since we took it, if we don't, um, if we don't acquiesce to what he asked for, uh, he will actually be hostile next time we encounter him. And frankly, I don't feel like screwing the di screwing the guy over like that. Opolis, he he'll have his time in the library soon enough. Babo, well, they're gonna need a new gardener, and I think he's the most experienced. I'm sure they'll uh, they'll let bygones be bygones and let him take that duty over again. Darian really sounds like yeah, uh, he made a mistake, and uh, deeply regrets it. So let's let's throw him a bone. Let the novice Darian stay in the monastery. So be it. The novice will be allowed to remain in the monastery, and he will fill the position of gardener, which is now vacant. Well, sorry, Babo. Looks like I, uh, really screwed you. Whatever. At least you have the fun of training with Sergio anytime he actually feels like making time for you. Thanks. You saved me. Oh. Forgive me, Master. I didn't mean to impose. I thank you for being allowed to stay in the monastery. My life will be different from now on. Damn straight it will. Now you can get you get to bask in all them sausages. So, we now have our nice fluffy robes. 
We can learn the circles of magic. And we can uh, get other instructions from all the other mages. If you were feeling generous, you can return this hammer to Garwig. Uh, as long as Serpentes didn't already take it from you. If Serpentes does take it, I don't think it ever makes its way back down here. He actually hangs on to it for the rest of his life. If we were to give it to Garwig... disappeared. How could that happen? I have failed. Now Enos will punish me. Oh, you bet he will. I'm bringing back the hammer. So it's you who took it. It is not my place to judge you. Inos shall administer his justice upon you, and you shall receive his punishment. How dare you speak to a mage that way? I am your superior now. So he puts it back on the shelf, and the funny thing is, if you keep putting him to sleep and taking the hammer, his dialogues just repeat the same way they already did. So it's almost like the sleep spell uh, also acts like an oblivion spell to him. Which is hilarious, but he never uh, holds you accountable for it. He doesn't even report you for doing it. Which is irrelevant, because Serpentes already knows we stole it. Um, if we talk to the other mages, we find out we actually get a new uh, a new dwelling. You have sworn your oath, brother. Welcome to our ranks. I will instruct you in the circles of magic when you have enough experience. Take this runestone as a token that the power now lies in your hands. That's just what I said. Teach me the first circle of magic. The first circle of magic allows you to use the runes which you have created. You can now learn the formulas of the spells to create your own runes. Each of us specializes in an area of magic. So consider well what sort of magic yours shall be. I'm always amused at uh, how in these games, every skill you learn usually has like an actual practical description from the teacher but the circles never really elaborate on what distinguishes one circle from the next in the first game they all came with like a story of like the power of the runes and of the gods and all that in this one they just tell you oh you stepped into the next circle and now you can learn new runes and that's about it there's nothing that really distinguishes how learning one circle is different than another but no matter. We can actually now equip this rune. You'll see it is equivalent to the fire arrow, arrow spell scroll in terms of mana and stuff. And in damage. So nothing's really different about that. When we start getting the other spells. We'll notice that the, um, the increase in potency of the spells. Also cor corresponds with an increase in the mana required. So like a fireball spell does three times as much damage as a fire arrow actually costs three times as much mana. So our, uh... We don't really get the bang for our buck anymore. Which is one of the things that makes uh, spell runes... Um... Not really as powerful of a an asset... As they would seem to be to a newcomer. I need a new place to sleep. There's a free chamber on the right here. Take the key. You'll find everything you need there. Yeah, I can't be s bunking with these plebs anymore. I am a distinguished priest of Inos. How are you? F f fine, Master. I, I work hard and try not to disappoint the magicians. Oh, relax, my friend. So it's funny to me that we, as a newly uh, promoted mage... Somehow get a really fancy chamber of our own with all the assets we would ever need. Including a rune table, alchemist bench, get our own chest, we get our own uh, bed with a canopy on it. Whereas all of the other mages have to bunk together like a bunch of chumps. <coughs> Pardon me. Actually, there's only four beds for the mages in total. There's a lot more mages than that. But regardless, ladies and gentlemen, I think that'll just about do it for tonight. We have come a long way, and now it is our destiny to meet with Lord Hagen and uh, really get the ball moving on this whole dragon thing we got going on. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very kindly for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget, the channel's now on Discord if you want to hang out there with a bunch of other folks. 
discuss the videos or any random uh, topics that come to mind. It's also where I will be making announcements for streams, videos, anything else that's coming up, any changes that gotta happen, delays or that sort of thing. Uh, announcements will be also be made on Twitter if you have any reason to uh, follow me on there. And don't forget to follow me on Twitch or subscribe to my stream archive channel. Links in the description below as well uh, for any live stream related nonsense. Till next time, ladies and gentlemen, have yourselves a wonderful week.